Hi everyone, welcome back to day four in our Halloween book nook series. Today we're going to fit the window. And you don't have to do the sash window, but I kind of think it makes a change from the other windows we've done in the witch's cottage. It's the same process, whichever way you want to do it. We have the window frames here, which also have the panes in them. And there's three layers but you could cut more if you wanted to or less, that's up to you. And you simply will glue the layers onto each other and then press them while they dry so that they dry nice and flat. And if you wanted to use um, acetate or perspex, you would sandwich it in between two frames. So you would make your frame there, put the acetate in and glue it in and then put that one on top. You just need to be careful when you're using glue. Less is more, you don't want it squeezing out where you can see it on the glass or faux glass, acrylic or perspex. I use this, it's called clear PVC. I don't know if you'll be able to see the measurements there, just about, I get it in my local Hobbycraft store. It's very thin and you can cut it with a knife, exacto knife. You could do this on your Cricut. I actually like to do it by hand. You'll have seen me when I cut windows before. I prefer to do it by hand, but we did put the template in the SVG that's in the aqua blue color. So it's very simple to cut it by hand. I use my cutting mat and it has the grid lines on it. So I kind of put my uh, window pane on and think oh okay and roughly cut it out but by all means use your Cricut to do that and you'll see here I've already made them up and the reason we did a large frame and a sash is to give you the option you could just do that frame on your own but if you wanted to do the sash as well I don't know if that's going to come out very easily but it gives you that extra depth because this one sits over there and so you have a difference in height and in person you can see that and if you wanted more of a depth just cut some more layers and make it as deep as you want to. You can see here I have, I don't know which way it's going to, let me try and get it on camera, I used my knife and literally cut out, there we go, cut out some cracks and scored it with the knife blade not the Cricut knife blade with my handheld knife blade to make it look like cracked glass and I cut some bits out as well, some shards. And this is haunted uh, book nook, so we're going for that look. And I did the same thing on the bottom. Uh, there you can see it there. So, and the way we construct this, it's nice to have the, the bottom bit flat so that when we glue these sides on and create the box, for the recess it's easy to deal with something flat but you could just do two sets of sashes and overlay them one on top of the other but I think the fact that we've got this box frame uh, the window frame you don't really notice that there's that extra layer behind it so I think that looks fine and the other thing that you need to bear in mind is which way you're looking through the window so the outside of a sash window, um, the top one is the one that projects forward. So if you can imagine, this one here would be the thing that slides down or the back slides up. So that if you were inside looking out, you would put your, let me think, I'll do it that way actually. If you were inside looking out now and you've got your top protruding you'd put your catch on top of this ledge I don't know if you can see that there there's a the ledge there you put the catch there because if you had it that way round hmm. <laughs> this is the difficulty going inside and outside you couldn't put the catch there so if you're inside looking out you want the sash towards you with the catch on the ledge if you're outside looking in you want the sash at the top so you would see have the 
catch on the ledge behind. I don't know if I've explained that very well, um, but play around with it until it looks good and real to you. So mine is, if you remember, I've got my window where I'm looking in from the outside through the forest and then into the room behind. So my extra sash pane is going on the top. And then I would theoretically have the catch behind there. So that's the way I'm going to build mine. So I'm going to build my recess for my reveals that way round. If you're doing it with the window at the back, just reverse this. And if you get it wrong, you can just cut another one. <laughs> but play around with it and dry fit it first. So the if you've made them up and put the perspex in, I'm going to glue this onto there, which is a straightforward. Again, just being careful. You can see the glue probably there now. This is the back side of it there. Be careful not to over glue. And if you get too much on, wipe it off with a cocktail stick, especially if it gets too near the edge. But it will dry clear as well if you're using tacky glue or similar. And I did keep the little bits that I cut out, so I might go back and glue some of the shards as, as if they've broken off but not quite fallen away. And then make sure that's all lined up. And then we'll press that while it dries. And then we'll look at, I've now decorated the front of my window. So this is the outside wall. And I used my Cricut, I don't know if that's gonna show up, to deboss some kind of faux shiplap effect there. So I literally used the file, the SVG file for this window wall and hid everything else and then put some debossing lines on this and cut it out of craft board. So you can use that as a template, your actual SVG for the chipboard, just change it out for craft board or any other material and you can cut exactly made to measure things. So that's a lot easier and glued that and pressed that overnight. And then I've painted my windowsill black because I'm having black windows with white reveals. So we can glue that in now and that literally just will pop in there. It's a little bit stiff where it's got a coat of paint on it. If it's too stiff, you can just sand it down, but that will sit there. So I'll glue that in next. And it's made a bit of a black paint smudge there, but I'm going to weather the outside anyway, and I can always paint over it in white. So you want to make sure that these lugs are firmly back that way and then it's flat and kind of square inside. So we'll leave those two things to dry and we'll come back. Okay, so they're dry. The next thing to do is literally, we're just going to glue the reveals on like a little box and you'll notice these are slightly longer and they hang down below and that's because they locate either side of the back of this windowsill there so they're meant to stick out so make sure we get the top one on and then that means you won't be able to glue these ones any further up because the top one overhangs the edges by, I don't know if you can see that, the depth of these. And I only painted them on one side because we won't see the other side. I did paint 
these edges because just in case sometimes when you glue something you might just see that edge or a hint of it if it was brown you might just see it so I did glue those edges so I'll glue those up now If you've got a gluing jig, you might like to use that. So centralise the top one so it sticks out the same either side. If there's any squeeze out, do use a cocktail stick. I mean, I'm just going to use a couple of my straight edged weights pushing on, on each side to help them. And we'll leave that to set up. Okay, so that's nearly set up. So I can carry on with the tutorial. I'd probably leave it a bit longer, but I also um, I put some glue on the ends of these also. So when they went up into this piece, it secured that. So I did that off camera. So we've got a kind of box now, box frame without a bottom. And here's the window, but the wrong side because we're only viewing the book nook. From one angle here so that's why I'm not really bothered about how the back looks it literally will fit on there and where we've got the back of the windowsill this will come down and just sit neatly there and it will actually would almost stay up by itself there so what we're going to do is glue Remember, it's sitting on that way round with the window at the back. So we're going to glue these three edges there. And the bottom of the window. So here, this bottom edge where it sits on the windowsill. So you, didn't ha you don't have to do that. If you can't get your glue that thin, um, three sides would be enough. So that's what we'll do next. And then we'll place that down. And it'll just sit on that window ledge. Support it and check if you've got any obvious squeeze, glue squeezing through, and you can see that's how it should look there. And then what I like to do is press this now on that side, but if you can imagine, we've got this sticking out now, so we wouldn't want to put this flat on the workbench. Take some extra sheets of chipboard or off cuts and can I get that so you can see that we're going to put them so that they come up to the windowsill not sitting on it so they come up and they're under the window and they support the whole of this piece now and then I'm just making sure it's exactly where I want it to be and then I'm going to put some weight on there quite a lot of it and press it down. And leave that to dry. Okay, so I've zoomed out a bit now. That is all in and dry. And I don't know if you can see the cracks in there, but they're looking quite funky to me, in a good way. Um, so we've got, that's our window wall. 
And if you did ever want to do this, that you could view it from both sides, you can always just cut another one of these in chipboard and it would stick there then in exactly the same way that we've done here. So you would have almost a gap, like a real cavity wall. So you could always do that if you're worried about seeing this particular window from both sides. So we've got that, we've got our back wall decorated and the chimney breast built if you're making one. You might want to leave your chimney breast removable if you want to take the actual fire in and out to turn it on and off. If so, I would say don't glue that to the back wall at this stage, even if you're undecided. We can always glue it in later. If you're absolutely sure you want your chimney breast fixed, I would say glue that on and then weight that down while it dries overnight. We've got our base with the flooring done now, the debossed flooring. And we've got our two side walls. So tomorrow we can begin constructing this book nook. The only other things you might want to have done ready are the silhouette trees. Again, we just glue those layers and press them like we did with the window frames. And depending on which way around you're doing it, you'll have the frame piece or you'll have a piece like the back wall, um, my back wall here, with the door cut out. If you want to, you would just slice another rectangle out of here as we explained in day one, if you want to be able to open that to get through to the light behind the silhouette of trees. So make sure you've got all the pieces decorated that you want. I'm probably gonna leave my frame till the end because I know that's going at the front like that. And I don't know the color of the outside of the book nook yet. It's probably gonna be black, but we'll see. Uh, so I'm gonna glue up my silhouette trees now and press those overnight. Um, and that will be that. So quite a quick, short and sweet one today, I think. Um, thanks for joining me and I'll see you soon.